say welcome to welcome to you all for our final flourish workshop. I'm going to share my screen and we'll get stuck straight in. But please make sure that you're able to access the chat. Let, let us know if you can't. Um, and I want you to make sure that you can ask questions or, or that you know that you can ask questions all the way through and we'll be sharing in the chat as we go. Something else that's super important to let you know about is that uh, there will be a bazillion links that we'll be sharing in the chat and we can email them out to you this afternoon if you're not able to save the chat. But if you are, all you need to do is look at the chat as if you were going to be writing me a message and click on the three dots and you'll see a little pop-up that says save chat. So let's get stuck in and um, keep an eye out for my team who will be in the chat, who will be sharing stuff. And finally, before, not finally, let's get stuck in. Dana, welcome to our final for 2023 Flourish Workshop. Today's topic is how to create epic videos for your social and, or your socials and website. So this uh, workshop today is presented to you by Hello Media and also Positive Passionate Businesswoman. So we've been doing a series of workshops this year. We've had eight to present to you and this is number eight. So it's our final one, which um, is sad, but uh, also you never know what might be coming next year. So woo, also you can be watching all the other ones that are now sitting on our YouTube channel. So we'll share a link to that in a moment. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm Kylie and uh, I build brands. So I help creators, entrepreneurs, brands and businesses get visible online so they can attract their customers to them instead of chasing them. So that's called client attraction marketing. It's really my specialty area. And I'm a big believer that it's not, should I be working on my digital marketing? But actually it's how well am I working on my digital marketing and really nailing what we're actually doing and making sure that if we're investing our time, whether that's time in money, time in energy, time in effort, whatever it is, if we're investing in that, then we absolutely need to be making sure that we're getting maximum bang for our buck. So making sure we've got a really great strategy to be working with so that we're getting some really awesome results on our socials. So you can see here a whole bunch of um, links coming through to you so that we can connect. Maybe the first one you want to do is uh, connect with me personally on Facebook. And um, I was just having a little chat with someone on Messenger today that was a client many years ago, and she's just signed up to join our Shine Online membership. And she, she was saying something about how frustrating Facebook is for her because it's her favorite place to be. And she really loves sharing photos of her family. And I said, same for me. And so for her and for me, both our families don't want a bar of it. And so it's really difficult for us to share photos of them because they don't want to want anything to do with them. So it's really tricky, isn't it? Because we have to be really conscious now about what people are happy to be sharing. And that's actually an extremely good thing. It's not a bad thing at all. But it's no more like a few years ago, we could just put anything out that we wanted to. We didn't even think about it. But now we've got to be very conscious about what we're putting out there, who's in it, et cetera, and just being really respectful and mindful of what we're doing. But I'm super happy for you if you want to um, if you want to connect with me on it. There's the link there in the chat if you'd like to. Um, I'm always up for making some new connections and some new friends. So marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but it's about the stories that you tell. So even in my introduction slide, which I'm going to move on to right now, it's also got stories in it as we go along. So I want you to think about how are you doing, how are you sharing stories in every single thing that you do? So I'm going to ask you guys to start with your first story right now, and that would be jump into the chat and introduce yourself. But try and do it in as short a um, couple of sentences as you possibly can. So I call this your superpower statement. I'm pretty sure we've got a YouTube video up about how to create your superpower statement. It's one of the most powerful things you can actually do because it makes introducing yourself incredibly easy. It tells who, what you do, who you do it with, how you help people, and it's just really succinct and awesome. So for me, for example, I can start with this one over here. I can literally just say, hi, I'm Kylie and I build brands. Connect with me here and leave my links. I could expand on that if I wanted to, or I could 
decrease it. So this one here, I then um, decreased this version of it for putting on my Instagram profile um, in the bio. And then I can expand on it to write my about page. So there's lots of different ways that we could use it. So once we've created that initial superpower statement, there's just so much more that we can do with it. So this page here is just a little bit of a brief, colorful bio. So it just tells you a little bit about me and what I'm all about in terms of business. So I'm a speaker, coach, mentor, writer, designer, presenter, content creator, branding specialist, and a strategic consultant. And all of that comes under the umbrella of business coach specializing in digital marketing. We also have a second arm to our company, Hello Media, where that so basically we're divided into one part of our company is um, all about coaching programs. The other part is all about our social media management agency side. Um, I'm a member of the Social Media Marketing Society, which keeps me on top of the game because Oh, as you would imagine, it is changing literally on the daily and in, in, uh, anything to do with digital marketing. Um, and so each year I head off to the States. I just came back in March this year from Social Media Marketing World in San Diego so that I can network with people over there and learn and upskill and then keep sharing what I'm learning because there's so much for you to keep up with. So if you can bypass the bazillions of things that you need to know and just uh, – get the updates from me as needed. You can jump into the Hello Media Facebook group or make sure that you sign up to our newsletter where I'm sharing important updates. So, uh, but there's a lot out there. There's a lot going on every day. So it's really important that you, that you get the bits and pieces that you need. So here's a beautiful version from Karen. I'll give you an example in the chat. She says, hi, I'm Karen from Kickstart Management and Event Planning Company. I help busy people plan and host a fun theme celebration. Beautiful. We've got Charmaine from In-House Pilates in Port Macquarie. I teach live streaming online Pilates mat classes for over 50s in a simple, uncomplicated way. Beautiful. And Christine from um, Founder of Good Sheet, empowering people to level up their zero waste journey with plant-based detergent sheets for cleaning. I'm a big fan. I've been uh, on the subscription for Good Sheet for a very long time now, and they're fabulous. We've got Vanna Mala, the founder of Face Yoga Australia, helping people to look years younger naturally and get empowered. I'm a face yoga teacher, eye fitness trainer, physiotherapist, and I love what I do. That's so magic. Actually, Vanna Mala, it's very evident that you love what you do because everything I see about in, your, in terms of your content and every time I see you online, I always think, what a glorious human. It's a bit like Ash, the happy therapist. She just exudes exactly what she does. It really embodies watch who she is. Pretty special there. So another thing that I want to talk to you about is Bite Size Business Live podcast. This isn't to do a plug of the podcast, although, of course, there might be some topics on there that you really might want to look into and watch. But I want to talk to you about how we do it and the reason behind why we do it, because one of the most tricky things is, is coming up with content. I'm pretty sure, just type yes in the chat if you agree with me, that coming up with endless ideas for content um, can be pretty challenging, especially when you're not feeling very creative. Now, here's ChatGPT arrived on the scene and a bazillion other um, AI systems, platforms, but... Going there and just using what they create for you isn't necessarily the best idea. However, I really like that it can give you ideas. So I always say to people, use it as a tool for ideas rather than to actually create the content for you. So uh, that's a good way to get content, of course. There are all sorts of other ways too, like you could really sit down and spend a day working on your content calendar, etc. One of my favorites is Days of the Year. So there's a website you can go to for that. And I'm writing a blog at the moment about it um, because it doesn't include anything of the Australian days. So I'm adding a whole lot of those for us in the summer, Southern Hemisphere as well. So I'll let you know once that is out. It'll be a downloadable and stuff as well. Uh, but Days of the Year is a great way to get some really good content ideas if, if you find some that resonate with your business. So let me talk a little bit more about Bite Size Live Business Podcast because for me, it's such a brilliant way to get content. So the first thing that we do is, and on a Monday, we usually do it at 11, but today we're doing it at 5. So Jenny Walk, who is, um, uh, I, we usually refer to each other as our digital BFFs. 
So she's this fabulous friend and colleague of mine and her company is Elephant in the Room Consulting. And Jenny and I are both business coaches, but we really specialize in very different areas. So what we do is we jump on a chat. The only way that we are prepared or that we prepare for it is by having a, a list of topics that we're going to talk about. So we have already decided the week before what's our topic for Monday. But that's the only prep that we do. So we jump on, let's say it's 11 a.m. We jump on and it's going to be live and unscripted. So we start in the middle here on Zoom. We aim for approximately 15 minutes. It often goes just over but we use this little one here called Switchboard. I bought that one on AppSumo because then it's not a subscription that I've got to pay monthly. It's just a boom, paid for it outright. I love those options, especially when I know it's something that I'm going to use a lot. So Switchboard means that we can go live to a lot more places. So we can go to multiple places on Facebook, also live on YouTube, also live on LinkedIn, which is super great. From that, once we've finished our chat, we then download that video recording and then we upload it into Canva. So we download it out of Zoom and upload it into Canva. Now, the reason this one's yellow is because we've previously created an intro and an outro. And we did that using CapCut, the desktop one. Now, that little logo is what I want you to be looking for on your phone. Whether you're looking at, for it in the Google Store or in the App Store for if you're on an iPhone, look for that. It's CapCut, C A P. C-U-T, oh, I've spelt it wrong in that one, sorry, I've said capped cut, but it's not, it's cap cut. And uh, so we used the desktop, the desktop version when we created our intro and outro. But today we're not going to be using the desktop version, we're going to be using our phone version. So that's already sitting there. So in Canva, we just load up the front and the back of that we've already created in CapCut. And we put, we just make sure that the um, audio blends in with it beautifully, et cetera. We then downloaded again the edited video and audio files. And then we upload the video file to YouTube. And that's where we add things like the thumbnail, the caption, um, all the little bits and pieces that we should be putting in our um, stuff um keywords etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we also upload the audio file to a platform that's free called spotify for podcasters it used to be called anchor but it was bought out by spotify for podcasters from that we use otter so otter is this really fabulous platform and it transcribes the recording so that we can then create uh, content particularly a blog post out of it so from there we write the blog post using the transcript from otter and then my website's built in shopify maybe you've got wordpress wix or whatever so if you were doing that you can um, build it on whatever you've got jenny for example has wordpress we also um, well, I also then embed the YouTube video into the blog post, and I also embed the Spotify, um, this one here now, into this blog post. Um, from all of that, then, I then can create graphics, videos, reels for social posts, et cetera, et cetera. So I can go put them on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all the different places. I also then um, put an excerpt into, I've spelled it except as well, not excerpt. <laughs> I should do a little more editing, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> I put this there into uh, a newsletter. I've already got the graphics to use, which is awesome. And then the final bit, number 12, is that's how I'm driving traffic to my website. So it is a long process. Probably, I've seen Kristen says, how long? Uh, probably a day. However, it's the whole thing is not working for a day because it takes ages to download that but and then ages to upload that. But So we're doing other bits and pieces while we're doing it. Also, for example, with the transcribing of the recording, I already know what I want to have in that blog post and I really want the blog post to be quite short, short and succinct. So it's just a summary of what we've talked about because, of course, I want to drive the traffic to the to either to watch it on YouTube or I want to drive them to listen to it on the um, podcast. Same with every one of those social um, posts. It will always drive the traffic to the website or wherever I'm wanting them to head to. So it's a beautiful circular thing where I'm also, no, I don't upload the transcript anywhere. No, I just use that for a blog post. Um, so, of course, it gives me content for my newsletter. It gives me content for all my socials. And it gives me a new blog post every week and gets me out there on YouTube as well and all those other places.
So while I say it's a day, it's certainly not a full day to get any of that done. And it's pretty fun. But then what it gives me is literally more than a month's worth of content. And we also create reels out of it. There's a new platform that we've been using. I can't tell you what it is in the chat because I can't remember. We've just tried out three and I don't remember which one exactly that we settled on, but it creates a reel out of the long form video. It's just so magic. Super fat, super happy to have that. So um, when I can remember which one that is, I'll let you guys know. So I love that. It's taken ages to nail that one, but we've been doing it that way for probably a year now. And um, I think it's about two years that we've been doing this live video podcast, but for about a year that I feel like we've really nailed the process, well, for the Hello Media part of it anyway, which feels super awesome. Now, one more thing I want to tell you about um, that's actually our first offering for today, because we have on the side over here on the right, it says um, connect, grow and give. So it's positive, passionate businesswoman. It's not really part of Hello Media. It's um, a standalone thing that I've had going for, for quite some time now because I'm really passionate about women supporting each other in business. We're all about connecting, growing and giving. So it's online, it's an online directory and meetups as well monthly. So we have three different levels of membership. So we have um, Grow, Bloom and Flourish. And so until um, the 30th of September, our Grow memberships are free. That gets you, gets you a listing online. So it's a brilliant way for you to get some great backlinks to your website, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, of course, what we all need to be working on is, is, is getting that SEO going on on our website. So if you want to be in on that, you can. Um, as I just said, there's only a couple more weeks, well, in fact, less than two weeks now for you to grab that one. So there's a link that um, Shem's just shared in the chat. And you need to use that code when you register so that you will get 12 months free, which is super awesome. So uh, if you haven't already set yourself up on that, definitely make sure that you jump on that. So the play button, I know it looks like ploy because I put the little play button in there, but the play button is the most compelling call to action on the web. So video is so incredibly important. In fact, it's never, ever been more important than it is right now. But who am I to talk about video? What do I know about video? Well, a lot, because I grew up in a video making family. So even before I was born, my mum was the lead actress in um, New Zealand's first ever colour feature film. To call, it's called To Love a Māori, and it's a beautiful, beautiful film. And um, yeah, that was a very long time ago. My dad was falling in love with her at that time. And my dad was a film producer. Here he is in his stubbies. And um, we have, were a very lucky family is that we used to be able to travel with him a lot for his films. So I grew up in Auckland, but here we are. This is his um, sound guy that used to go along with him because look how big all the cameras and stuff were back then in the 80s. And so here we are as a family on our holiday while my dad's working and we're, he's filming um, up in the Whit Sundays. So we went on this beautiful catamaran for about two weeks around while he was filming this travel show. Um, many years later, here we are in the 90s, that's me on the right, in St. Petersburg. So my first job out of uni was, um, I, I did communication, so majored in TV and writing uh, at uni. And I headed off for my first job, which was based in London, but we were filming the F Formula One World Powerboat Championship and the European Jet Ski Championship. So we were, uh, my first year over there, I was in 22 different countries. And this one here, we're about to get in that helicopter and go and film over the top of this um, powerboat race, which was extraordinary. So I was writing for around 22 magazines at that time and then presenting um, in this TV show and all of that kind of stuff. So it was a loads and loads of loads of fun through my 20s. This one here is another one. So that was in Sardinia, this beautiful island, um, Italian island. So anyway, there's lots more that I could share, but that just gives you a little sneak peek into my history in terms of video, so uh, it's been long, a long career in that. And, of course, how different things are now because as long as we got one of these in our hands, we can constantly be making video. We don't need all the massive editing equipment and all that stuff. Yes, of course, if we want to create big 
creating some pretty professional stuff, we could be doing that. But these days, people are loving it when we're rough and ready and just getting it out there. So what we're going to talk about today is why video, also using video to showcase your brand, planning your video, and using AI for your videos. And we've also got a challenge and some bonuses. So you'll be doing a lot of learning and doing as we go. So my second offer to you guys today, so the first one was your free Grow membership for 12 months. Your second one is anybody that wants to enter, all you need to say is, me in the chat and this one is for you to go in the draw to win a free one-on-one -on -one social media audit strategy session we'll do it live together on zoom just you you the winner and me um it's worth 799 dollars. you get it recorded you get a report actionable items and strategy tips so i'm super super pumped for that and um it's one of my brand new offerings it's not even on my website and I'm not sure if I'll ever put it out there because it's a massive, massive thing. Um, anyway, I will at some point put it out there. So me, me in the chat if you, if you want to be in for that. You need to be here at the end of the session because we'll be drawing it there. So if you're not there at the end um, and your name is, comes up, we'll have to spin it again. But let's get stuck right into why video. So my, I've actually got in my kitchen above my um, pantries is an old vintage video collection, video camera collection, because my dad was an avid collector of antique cameras and video cameras and stuff. So I have half the collection. When my dad passed, my brother got half and I got half. And so I always smile when I uh, see find these little pictures in Canva, which is beautiful old cameras and stuff, because I have a bunch of those sitting in amongst my, um, sitting where I can look at them all the time. My husband has often said that I should give them to a museum, but I like having them around me. So I want to know, I've got a question for all, for you all, and oh, thank you to the, I've just seen everybody in the chat um, wanting to enter that giveaway, so that's awesome. Thank you. Um, so I've got a question for you, though, for those of you that are here today. So if you could just jump into the chat and let me know, on a scale of one to five, one being the lowest, five being the highest, like most important, um, how do you, how how important do you feel that social media, uh, sorry, that video is for your overall social media strategy? So let me know, do you think it's one meaning not very important, number five, very, very, very important. So I want to know not necessarily what you're doing now, because, you know, it might be, well, you haven't done any video, but do you still feel that video is super, super important? So we've got a four, a four, a five, I'm not sure what five versus NB is, Janine, but I'm intrigued. We've got five, four, five, five, four. Um, so there's no one there with a one, two, or even a three. So now let me know how much you actually feel like you're doing. Are you doing, let's say, um, use some words like I'm doing enough or I want to do more or I'm not really sure how. So give me a feeling. There you go, Christine says almost none. But clearly you're here, so that says you actually want to learn how to do it and hopefully in a very, very simple way. Yes, I need to. Not enough. I want to do more. Great. Well, for me, I probably do video in some way every single day, but I know it's not enough because I'm not doing very often doing lives except for my Monday lives with Jenny. I'm not very often doing um, certainly not enough promotional video. So definitely, definitely that's an issue. But at the end of the day, we've only got so many hours in a day, right? Um, uh, Janine says very important, very, oh, NB important. I just can't type quickly enough. <laughs> and Christina says, I'm not sure how, and I need to get past my perfectionism on screen. Oh, my goodness, Christina, that is a common problem for everyone. Say yes in the chat if you also feel that if it's not perfect, then you just wouldn't put it out there. But some very, very wise person a number of years ago said to me, um, done is better than perfect. And I've really had to take that on board, listen to it. And uh, now I just set myself a time limit. And I'm like, well, this, that's with regards to everything in my business, with regards to my presentations, with regards to my content, my prep for everything. This is your limit. This is what is blocked into your calendar. Off you go. That's it. 
because otherwise I could be working on one post for a whole day because I just want it to be perfect. So and Janine says, yes, 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 and I'm trying to get better too. <laughs> so there you go. It is a very common thing. Less of a perfectionist, I mean. I know. I'm really working on that as well. So just remember, done is better than perfect. So video gets the highest organic reach and the best engagement unequivocally. So it gets the most because, A, there's visual appeal. So videos are obviously um, very appealing. They're easily able to grab our attention. If you think, let's just hold on to the phone here. People are literally just going scroll, 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 scroll all day. Well, not all day, but, you know, while they're on their socials, they're just scroll, scroll, scrolling. So whatever it is that takes your eye and makes you stop and watch is so incredibly important. So that's why that visual appeal and how we can grab people's attention is incredibly important. So also video can give you so much information in a very tiny amount of time. Imagine if I was telling you about um, or well, latest uh, Instagram update, for example, and I wrote it in a blog and then I put a post up and I said, head over to the blog to read it. How many people are going to do that? But instead I could do a quick little video as a little reel, not necessarily of me talking, but even just little um, showing you how to, what it's about or something like that, like a little screen video or even just um, even a carousel that's got a little video in it. There's lots of different ways to do it and you can absorb that really, really super fast compared to um, if I'd asked you to go and read the blog about it, which would have screenshots and all things. A so video just makes things super fast. Uh, also, video can be mobile friendly. So if you're shooting that way, then that's a great opportunity to be able to um, get in people's news feeds and take up the whole part of the screen. So I know a lot of people are still in the habit of shooting this way. The problem is with that is that it's really only good for Facebook and for YouTube. So ideally, you'd be shooting uh, lengthways. And um, unless you think in beforehand that maybe it's something that you want to be on YouTube as well, because then it's much easier to shoot like that and just use the centerpiece. If you want to also put it on Instagram for reels or something, than it is to shoot um, lengthways and then try and stretch it out for YouTube, which is really not good. Obviously for shorts, it's great. Um, so you've really got to think before you get stuck into videos, where are you actually going to be putting it and what do you want to be doing with it? So, but the fact that it's so easy to, to do video for mobiles makes a big difference. Um, also, you've got to think about though, is it going to be relevant to your audience? So does it align with their values? Does it align with your overall marketing goals? Because ultimately, really, the success of your videos is going to depend on have you nailed it in terms of who it's for and where they're absorbing their content. So if you're just going all out on YouTube and loads of YouTube shorts, but actually all your audience tends to be on Facebook, then you're kind of missing some big opportunities. So you want to make sure that you really are very, very hyper aware of who your audience is, where they're hanging out, how they like to engage, what so sort of content that they like to... Um... <laughs> Just going to press pause for a moment there. Um, so I've got a few little bits and pieces of stats to be sharing with you. And this little piggy video, I've made him, um, oh, how many, I think I remade him about six months ago and put him back up on YouTube as my um, like little welcome video when you go to the channel. And he, I just love a swimming pig. It's on my bucket list to swim with the pigs. So I do have some quirky things that go into my branding, but that works for me. I'm, I'm happy with that. So anyway, I redid this little swimming pig, um, which I'll play in a second. But why video? Well, videos are processed by the brain 60,000 times faster than text. So they're easily digested and they're easily shared, which is super awesome. Like this morning I was on Instagram. I just randomly found this amazing guy in my explore feed. And so I just shared him into my stories. I think it was on, not on Instagram, it was actually on my personal Facebook. And um, anyway, so I shared him into my stories and I just said happy Monday because he was just so joyful. I just felt, felt it was a really lovely thing to share. Now that guy could just be shared a bazillion times over every day. He was that, that, that fabulous. 
So, um, yeah, just being able to share something into your stories is just so powerful as well. So there's heaps of um, stats and bits and pieces about it, but what I want to give you is some examples when I share some stats. So in your video, for example, you want to think about what story it is that you're telling or what story you're wanting to share rather than just selling your, um, what, uh, sorry, promoting what you sell or what you offer. So I've often talked about the 80-20 rule and it's no different when it comes to your video and the content that you're creating. So 80% of the time you're edutaining. So that's a mixture of entertaining and educating. And 20% of the time is how much you're selling. So this one could be seen as a 20% post. So this one, here, let me play the little piggy video. <laughs> so he's had a little glitch there and stop but can you guys um hear the music cool okay i seem to have fixed a little zoom glitch that i had for a very long time whereby the sound couldn't be shared and i'm actually just going to do a reshare and click this button to make a million percent sure <laughs> um, I just read this lovely thing in the chat there from Janine who says, I didn't know pigs could swim until she saw him. Yes, in the Bahamas. I so want to go there. I'll see if I could play the last little bit of him. No, he doesn't want to play for some reason. Anyway, there's a little wee um, thing, just a call to action at the end saying, read the caption for more details. So let's have a little look at an example of one. So this is one of our clients, You Can Too Dance Studio. They're in New Zealand, in Auckland, and they have had some incredible success with their Instagram account. Facebook too, but I want to talk to you a little bit about their Instagram. So when we first started working with them, they were in the early 400s in terms of the followers. But by the time they got to 460 followers, we were already having some really, really good results with them. So we were creating reels for them and then also just posting them onto YouTube. Now you can see here, only 460 followers. So this is um, probably about November last year because we started working with them on October last year. And then this one here, oh, let me share it over to the uh, – Audience window. Thanks, guys. Um, although you might find the notes kind of interesting. <laughs> but thank you very much for sharing that. <laughs> um, so if we see here, so you can see very, 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 yes, of course. Thanks, Christine. Very, very low subscribers on the YouTube pretty low subscribers on their Instagram, although I'm a big believer that 100 followers that are engaged is way better than 10,000 with nobody engaging with you. So, um, yeah, as you, anyway, as I said, low subscribers. But look at this. So this is a reel here, and it had four and a, or just over 4,500 views on the reel. And then when we just shared it also as a um, – oh, this is an example of what was one as a short – and this here is 1.2 thousand views. Now, in what other universe could you have only 15 subscribers but actually have 1.2 thousand views? That's pretty awesome and extraordinary. So, um, oh, here's my notes in the chat, uh, in, in the side, which I forgot to mention. So videos help you get to get to reach a wider audience, even if you have very little or low followers or subscribers. So this account, so the Instagram is only 460 followers and 15 on YouTube, um, but their reach is in the thousands. So what that means is an average theatre cinema capacity seats two to 300 people. So imagine then how many cinemas that is to get to 1.2 thousand people watching the short and over four and a half thousand watching a reel. So that's extraordinary. But look what's happened um, like 10 months later. They're now over two and a half thousand followers on Instagram um, from 460. So that's had some really, really wonderful growth. But then this reel here, which Shim's just shared the link to that reel because it's a super little cute one, but I'm going to play it for you now. But have a look at this. This reel here that I'm about to share has had 11.1 thousand views. This one over here, 9.8 thousand. So they're really getting some pretty extraordinary results. 
So I'm going to play it for you. So what we notice across all the accounts that we manage, including our own, is that people love people. And it's very unfortunate for me with my own Hello Media account because I don't want to be on my own account all the time. It's not my it's not my vibe. It's not my style at all. But every time there's a post um, with a picture of me or my family or whatever, it always gets way, way more reach. Tell me in the chat if you've noticed it's the same for you. So for this dance studio here, when we do posts, um, rather than just promoting their wedding private lessons coming up or whatever, they don't get as, as much reach as they do when we post things about some of their students and particularly some of their kids, which is really nice. So I'll press play on this one so you can watch it. It's just short and brief. Whoops, hang on. I didn't want to. Oh, weird. Let me see if I can play it on the screen. I need somebody to hear Somebody to know Somebody to have Somebody to hold It's easy to say So this wee boy, this is a little video that they did a few years ago when he started. Um, I think he was six and then he's still with them now and he's 12. So it was just a cute little video showing his journey. Um, and so anyway, there's no reason is there really when you watch it that that would just have performed so fantastically for them. Um, and Vana Mala says, same for me. I don't want to be always in my post, but they get more attention totally. And I find that super frustrating. So it's a really tricky thing to find that sweet spot where you're getting a good number of, um, well, a good mix of stuff that you're putting out there anyway. So I hope that gives you a little bit of, um, what's the word, inspiration maybe, or a little bit of hope that just because you might have low followers, doesn't mean you can't get some really awesome results and in less than a year have some really incredible growth as well. So they're doing a lot of the strategies that we teach, lots of sharing of others' accounts, the stories and making sure they've got constant stories going on as well as the content that we create for them too. But yeah, they're having some really awesome success, which is um, exciting. So a little bit more to tell you about is that video posts attract three times more inbound links than text posts. So an inbound link is a link that's coming from another site to your own website. And we need those for SEO. So videos not only give you the information, but also they help connect your brand with your target audience. So that's really, really, really important that we, we think about who that target audience, audience of ours, uh, who that target audience of ours is, and we think about what it is that we can create for them that's going to trigger those emotions that's necessarily to build a long-term um, relationships, but also to encourage them to buy from us or book our service. So in 2023, people are watching 17 hours of online videos per week. Does that blow your mind? Or do you think that that's not that much? So let me know in the chat if that's... Uh, kind of mind-blowing um that doesn't mean tv that means literally stuff online so that might mean youtube that might mean streaming netflix etc as well but 17 hours i think is quite a lot so 90 percent uh, or sorry um people are 52 percent more likely to share video content than any other type of content and 75% of viewers watch short form video content on their mobile devices. So are you, if you're watching YouTube on your TV, do you actually watch shorts, for example, or just the big, the big videos? So, or would you be more likely to watch shorts on your phone? So let me know in the chat. Christina, I agree, mind blowing. <laughs> do they have a life? I'd say so. Uh, they're just maybe doing a lot of learning or I don't know. Uh, Julia says shorts on my phone, definitely. Yeah. So I tend to pretty much always watch the short form video on my phone. However, I found someone the other night that I got really obsessed with. And uh, it was this amazing um, family that's traveling around the States in a bus that they've converted. So I watched the YouTube videos and then I got stuck into their shorts. And I, it was just, that wasn't on my phone, that was on my um, 
TV. Oh my goodness, you don't even realize how many you've watched till you look at your history and it's like, oh my word. Um, but the guy was home alone and I just got stuck down this rabbit hole with this converted bus. <laughs> I was just fascinated. So um, maybe like me, uh, you feel the same way, that having you in your videos is really not, not the vibe you want to go with. But that's fine because there's other ways that you can put some stuff out there, and we're going we're gonna to do some of that today. So firstly, you've got three seconds to, ca to capture someone's attention. So as we know, people are going scroll, scroll, scroll endlessly. So you need to grab their attention. But how are we going to do that? Well, first little tip tip that we're going to share today is you want to be using the word you. So if you say you in your first sentence of your video, you're going to increase your views by 66%. And that's whether it's any variation of you. So you're, you're, you're yours, you're, you've, you, yourself, yourselves. Um, if you use two of those in the first sentence, that's actually going to increase your views by 97%, which is just extraordinary, isn't it? So it doesn't matter if it's a version of you or if it's actually you, but absolutely it'll make a huge difference to the way you do it. And that's not even necessarily you speaking it either. So it's whether it's the words in there, et cetera, et cetera. But if it is you speaking, then try not to do the one where you're looking off camera when you're um, recording, but you're actually looking at the camera because I want to speak to you so that I capture your attention. So audience retention is one of the most important factors in getting your video to be shown to more people. So if you're speaking to them and you're saying your or your words on the screen are saying you or your or one of those words, then that's really going to help those people stop the scroll and take notice and watch your video. So how I got all that information is that TubeBuddy is something that I'm subscribed to that helps me with my YouTube content. Um, so TubeBuddy and vidaction.tv did a study of 30,000 videos, and they found that if you, that if you say um, the word you once in the first five seconds of a video, it'll get you that much bigger, higher increase. Um, and of course, if you say it twice, even better. It's pretty incredible. So they grouped the variations of the word you, counted them all as you, and then um, got these incredible stats out of it, which was awesome. So, for example, you might want to say something like, um, or here's how you might want to say you twice in a sentence or in the first five seconds. Today I'm going to show you how to change your life with my incredible invention of blah, 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 blah. So in this case, you and your both count as you. So you want to remember to speak directly to that camera, speak to the viewer as you as a single individual. So make sure you don't have a mistake of going, hello, everybody, and try to talk to all the people because I'm not all the people. I'm just one person. So speak directly to me only. You also need to show that, that show the viewer that they're the most important person in your video rather than me, the subject that's presenting it. So the more you say you, the better your videos are going to do. So let's look at a version of a video. This is my little one that I showed you before of the swimming pig, but this is the variation that I have on YouTube for it. And see what I start with is you. Shame that he was all pixelated for you guys. Sorry about that. But we'll put the link in there so you can watch him if you fancy at some point. So the next video I'm going to show you is not a new video. This is an old video. And this one here, I think it's seven years old, this ad. But it's absolutely one of the best. And I'm always studying ads that work well, et cetera, et cetera, why they work well. So if you've seen this ad before, and chances are you have, you'll know if you have or not, because this, this image right here will be like, ah, uh, I know this one. So if you have seen it before, then because you'll be watching it again, then see if you can count up or notice how many times he mentions the word you. And if you haven't seen it before, just sit back and enjoy it for how incredibly clever it is. So I'm going to press play now if that's actually going to work. 
It's about two minutes, I think. Mm. This is where your ice cream comes from. Oh. The creamy poop of a mystic unicorn. Totally clean, totally cool, and soft serve straight from a sphincter. Mmm, they're good at pooping. But you know who sucks at pooping? You do. That's because when you sit on a porcelain throne, this muscle gets a kink in the hose and stops the Ben and Jerry's from sliding out smoothly. Is that a problem? I don't know, are hemorrhoids a problem? Because sitting at this mm. angle can cause hemorrhoids, bloating, constipation, and a buttload of other crap. And seriously, unicorn hemorrhoids? The glitter gets everywhere. But what happens when you go from a sit to a squat? Voila, this muscle relaxes and that kink goes away faster than Pegasus laying sweet sherbet dookie. Now your colon's open and ready for battle. That's because our bodies were made to poop in a squat, and now there's a product that lets you squat in your own home. Introducing the Squatty Potty. No, Squatty Potty is not a joke. And yes, it will give you the best poop of your life, guaranteed. Mm. I don't just mean you bloated lords and hemorrhoidal ladies. I mean everyone. Kink, unkink. Kink, unkink. It's simple science, really. Can't get the last scoop out of the carton? With the Squatty Potty, you get complete elimination. Spend too much time on the chamber pot? The Squatty Potty makes you go twice as fast for your money back. I scream, you scream, and plop, plop, baby. Maybe you're sore from squeezing out solid globs of rocky road. The Squatty Potty gives you a smooth stream of froyo that glides like a virgin swan. Plus, when you're done, it tucks neatly out of sight, thanks to its innovative, patented design. Truly a footstool fit for a constipated king. So if you're a human being who poops from your butt, click here to order your Squatty Potty today at SquattyPotty.com. You wish you tried it years ago. And if you don't trust the prince, how about your doctor? Shark Tank, Half Post, NPR, Men's Health, Howard Stern. He poops from his butt. They're all crazy about the Squatty Potty. Not to mention the 2,000 Amazon users who gave the Squatty Potty five stars, including the author of this moving haiku. <coughs> Oh, Squatty Potty, you fill me with endless joy, yet leave me empty. So order your Squatty Potty today. I'm not saying it will make your poop as soft as this cookies and cream, but I'm not saying it won't. Squatty Potty, the stool for better stool. <sighs> Pooping will never be the same. And neither will ice cream. Huh. That one for you, very good. How does it taste? Is that delicious? Mm -hmm. Is that the best thing you've ever had in your life? Mm -hmm. There you are. Did anybody catch how many you words were in there? There was a lot. A lot. Um, Shia Merlin counted it up, and there's 25 uses of the word you, which is, you know, substantial. So I love that ad, and the advertising company that created that have created a number of very, very clever ones. So if you've ever seen um, the poopery ads, super, super clever as well. Um, and he just nails what he does. So funny, so relatable, etc. And also, so often they do the really tricky um, topics that are incredibly challenging to come up with ways to present them. And if you want to see what people wrote about it, which that to me is the engagement that you get on something is always so um so powerful, then click on that link that we've shared in the chat because um, the comments are literally gold. So we've looked at some of the words that we do want to use, and that, of course, is you, you'll, your, you'll, et cetera, et cetera. But what about the words that we shouldn't use? So those are the words that we don't want to use just at the beginning, obviously, but even towards the end, we've got to be super, super careful. So we sp sp particularly don't want to use um, through the middle. So that would be words like so, because it sort of sounds like you're winding up, or thanks, or bye, or comment below, or in conclusion, or all right, okay, done, let me know what you think, hope this was helpful. All of those make it think that there's actually nothing good coming straight afterwards because you're at the end. So this is all called ending language. So you don't want to use ending language during a video or even towards the end of the video. You want to keep them watching. And it's a signal to the algorithm to show them more of your content. 
So even at the end, if you were to say um, uh, like and subscribe or whatever it is that you want to say, it's actually fine, but what is it that you want them doing at the end? So maybe you do want to go and take that action and, and like or subscribe, but maybe you actually want them to watch the next video and the next video. So it's really tricky, but you've got to think about what do you actually want them to come out? What do you want to come out? So um, also, even if you just think about going to the movies or watching a movie on Netflix or something, do you ever sit there and watch through all of the end credits? Does anyone? Let me know um, in the chat if you, uh, if you do that, if you sit there and watch right to the very end of the credits. So it's the same kind of thing because that signals that it's the end. Yep, me neither. No. So, oh, James is only on Marvel Classic. <laughs> Occasionally, Kate. Usually when binging a show, they cut them off. Yeah, that's true too, isn't it? Um, so we really need to think about that, that if we use that kind of language before we've actually finished, people are going to click on. Uh, Janine says, sometimes when I really enjoy the movie, I think what's so clever is when people show extra snippets of the film throughout it or they show their bloopers through it or something that keeps you watching rather than just nothing but credits. Um, so there's heaps of different ones um, that you can imagine. So just if you want to find out more about that kind of language stuff, you can just Google what is um, ending language, ending, that's terrible for my accent, isn't it? Ending, E-N-D-I-N-G, ending language. Okay, 90% of info transmitted is visual, 40% respond better to visual info than text. I already mentioned before about keeping them edutaining and I use that 80-20 rule. So um, that's educating and entertaining because video builds trust and it builds loyalty. We've always got to think about that no like, and trust factor. And video gets more organic reach. So if you're not doing paid ads, then you have to be doing video because it's going to really help you get out there. And in fact, even if you're doing paid ads, Video is such an incredibly powerful way to reach more people as well. So you always need to think about starting with relevant content. It doesn't have to be top quality. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, filmed professionally. It can literally just be filmed on your phone. And there's some studies were done that showed that video shot on an iPhone outperformed professional videos in terms of reach. So the main thing is that you need to be telling stories that your audience wants to hear. You've got to lead them through a process and not just say, bye, my stuff. And really, you've always just got to think about striving to create your best organic posts. So you want to create entertaining content based around the products that you sell or that you offer. So let's have a little look at some examples of ones that we've done. So this one I'm about to show you is um, uh, this one was back in the days of Square. Now, keep in mind that we're never going to make Square content anymore. We're certainly not going to be putting Square content on Instagram. But the only time I create Square content is for um, ads. So I always create ads in Square size and real size. And if we're making video, then we should make sure we're doing it in the right size. But then we also should think about where else can we put it? So if you're going to make a reel and put it on Facebook and Instagram, then you may as well also go and post it on YouTube because it's the same size. So also you can put it in your Facebook group. You can put it on your personal page. There's lots of different ways to repurpose that content. But let's take a little look at the square one here because I love it, even though it's now with hero. was a winner of a, of a post for them so it's not a reel because this is pre-reels it's just a little square size video me too janine that's why i've always got to share that one now you'll notice also it was all using <laughs> yes weird um it was all using stock footage because um some of our clients don't share as much content for us as they should when we're going to create it for them so we have to come up with very creative ways of making content let me show you some of the hello media ones that are both just as um but okay so these have both been created on a platform called wave and i'll talk about that right at the end um oh so for reels then you can also put it on facebook reels instagram reels and also on youtube shorts 
yeah, that's the same size for that. But for ads, I was just saying that I only create them in square and in the real size, but I wouldn't put a square anywhere else, um, like on Instagram, I mean. So these ones here, uh, they were created before Reels was actually a thing because on InVideo and on um, what else have we used? Uh, Wave.video, we've used Promo. We've used all kinds of different video creating platforms. And even then, back a few years ago, you could create it in one size and then resize it for another and another. So we had um, these ones here were created as vertical. So I was able to put them on Instagram and stuff a long time ago, which was awesome. But then I could also resize for um, YouTube or resize as a square if I wanted to. So I'll show you the one on the left first. Probably a good call to action there would be read the caption for more info or something, but I didn't. And then here's the next one. So I just wanted to show you first off that it's super easy to create stuff out of stock video. So if you don't really know where to start, that's a really good place to start. So here's a little bit of a handy um, slide. You might want to screenshot this. But um, this just gives you a little bit of an insight to how long a social media video should be. So this isn't about the size, it's about the length or the duration. Now, keep in mind that this could be changed tomorrow, but this is where it's at today in September 2023. So back in 2021, Instagram combined their main feed videos and their IGTV platform. Does anyone remember IGTV? Um, and then they created a new format simply called Instagram video. So the maximum length that will appear on your Instagram grid is one minute, but viewers can still click through to finish watching videos that are up to 15 minutes long. And if your account is a verified account, then you can upload videos as long as 60 minutes from your desktop app. But ideally, you want to think about the shortest length that you can to keep people watching. Because when you look at your analytics and your stats, you'll notice that they get shorter and shorter. Um, sorry, that your people are dropping off as time goes on. So you want to make sure that they're really, really short and punchy with really cre great creative visuals. Um, so that people that are scrolling by just really passively can't ignore them. So we really need to think hard about how we're going to get su success on that grid. So 15 to 60 seconds for um, Instagram video length, feed stories, reels, that would also be for Facebook as well. Um, if you're doing TikTok, there's the link there. This isn't saying that you're allowed them to be this long. It's just that this is the best um, stats at the moment for what they could be. You can see that LinkedIn is a maximum of 30 seconds, Snapchat 7 seconds, 6 to 15 for Pinterest. So they all have um, different, different reasons and obviously you don't always just want to share the same one over and over and over. But if you wanted to, then what you could do is just create this 15 seconds one here and put it on all those places. Um, rather than it can be very frustrating if you're doing a YouTube short and so say you're doing not you've done 90 seconds on instagram but then you've put it over onto youtube and it, the last 30 seconds gets cut off because you can't do 90 seconds as a short so that's pretty frustrating so anyway lots and lots and lots of things for you to consider but no matter what length you choose to um for them the sweet spot is always in that first three seconds and that's where you've got to make sure that you want to encourage them to stick around to watch the whole thing um, the Facebook one is, it can be up to a minute um, for a, a Facebook reel, but it, that's even shorter than it is for an Instagram reel in terms of the attention span. So I created this post and um, this is just a screenshot from it, but I have it permanently pinned on my Instagram account. So I'll share the link with you for that in the chat because it absolutely blows my mind how often people are not aware of the real safe zone. So 
For example, if you're talking to camera and you've got captions up, and usually people put them at the bottom, but can you see what would happen if you put them at the bottom? We wouldn't be able to see any of the captions because it's all sitting here under this. So we've got, you know, the company name, or, you know, account name. We've got the start of the um, caption. We've got people that are liking it, et cetera. We've got the audio up here. We've got all these other bits and pieces. So you've actually got this tiny amount that is your real safe zone. So I want to make sure that you've got access to that post, that you can um, save it or something in your into your Instagram so that you can always refer back to it. Because it is mind-blowing how many times I wish that I could read what was in people's reels, but I can't. Let's look at some examples here, though, of how you could be repurposing content. So I showed you before about bite size and what we did. Maybe that just overwhelmed you and that was just all too much. But what you could do, and I generally like to start with my strategy with a blog post and then think, what else can I do with this blog post? And I'm going to you know, repurpose it and create a lot of content. So this blog post is actually over a year old, but it's one of my favorites. And I was reminded of it because... We just created a reel for it um, just, I think, on Friday. So blog posts don't need to be old. You can repurpose them, keep reusing them over and over. You can even redate them and give it a little freshen up. So here's a screenshot of the whole um, blog post thing. So I just wanted to show you, not, not expecting you to be able to read any of it because we'll give you the link to actually read it if you want to. But it's called Affirmation Words to Say to Your Kids to Keep Them Feeling Positive. So there's a bit of blurb. And there's a YouTube video that we've created. Um, I won't play that one to you. I'm just going to play the little short version that we turn into a reel. Because we did this one in wave.video, or maybe it was in video, I can't remember which. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we can just then um, resize that content. Uh, we also have an, an embedded video in there from someone else's YouTube account that was um, going to work well for it. We've got all the list of the words. And then we've got a whole bunch of stuff we designed for this company that they've had printed as stickers and then they send out a few sheets of stickers out with every order, which is out there for their product is for teens and tweens. So if you like from eight to 18. Um, so I'm going to press play on this little video that's on Instagram and so you can see it and um, just get a feel for it. And again, it's all stock footage. And I want you to think about that 80-20 rule because you'll notice here, this is not about selling the product that they sell. This is just about speaking to their audience that have kids of... So it's a longer version that we have as the um, YouTube version of it. Um, but, yeah, so we created that in one of those platforms. And it's so awesome that what they have going on in, in video at the moment, for example. You can put the link to the blog post in there, and then it creates the video for you. And then you just switch out the music if you want to, or some of the words. or so You can upload your own pictures or videos, or you can use the stock videos that they suggest. And it's really super awesome. Thanks, Karen. Love it. I know. I really love it too. Um, and that was June last year, I think I created that one. But we can keep reusing it over and over. Or well, June when I created the YouTube size. But then we can turn it into, you know, and use it for different purposes as well. Thanks, Francie. Um, so I'm going to show you one more. This is also from, and this is an older one. This is from... I think it was last year for the dance company, a dance studio you can too, when they had um, that TV show Dancing with the Stars, 
So there was a local radio star that was dancing with one of their students in the show. So we, this was the very first week that we started working with them. So it must have been October last year, actually, now I think about it. And we had very little content to work with, but then we were like, oh, we can grab it from different places. And as long, yes, that one was wave video. Yes, we will share that. Um, oh, boo-hoo, Kate, the Zoom problems. Uh, Kristen, we will share that link to the blog post with you for sure. And keep in mind that when you watch the YouTube video from within that blog post, because it's embedded in there, that all counts as views on YouTube also. So you don't necessarily want to say click here to watch the YouTube video and send them elsewhere. You want them to stay within, within the blog post and keep moving around your website. So this one I'm about to show you now is um, they, um, what was I wanting to say about these guys? Um, oh, so we got some of the footage from the TVNZ stuff that they were promoting on their socials, downloaded that, added into Canva and, you know, cut it all together. So it was a chance to give us some really good um, content. But anyway, I'll play you the first one first. And so this was, um, a lot of it was, you know, during the practice in their studio. You can dance, every dance with the guy who gives you the eye, let him hold you tight. And you can smile, every smile for the man who held your hand beneath the pale moonlight. But don't forget who's taking you home, and in whose arms you're gonna be. So darling, save the last dance for me. Oh, I know that the music's fine, like sparkling wine, go and have your fun. So that one, I was actually, we did that in CapCut. Um, so yeah, lots of things to, that you could do in CapCut, and we'll be playing around with CapCut Cap Cut in about five or ten minutes. Let me show you the second one, because then she got booted off the show. And then because it was COVID, they had um, her back on because I think three had to leave the show. And so they brought her back on. Anyway, here's a nice little one about that. Here comes the, the sun. To it. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. It's all right. Little darling. The smiles return into the faces Little darling, it seems like years since it's been here Here comes the sun <laughs> So that one also created on CapCut. So really, really simple. One of the things I like to do with CapCut is actually create a board as a real size in Canva and um, then I'll download it onto my phone and, and add photos and stuff to it as well. But there's lots of different ways. So if you are late joining, then pretty soon we're going to be doing a little reel together and you're going to need five photos. So you don't have to take them right now. You might already have something in there that you want to use. But if you can find, if, if you don't have photos to use, just take some photos around your office and you could, you know, name the real day in the life of my office or might be your view outside, whatever you want it to be. And of course, you don't even have to post it, but it's a great opportunity for you to get a reel up and to put it out there on Instagram and Facebook today with a really awesome new template that I just found um, last week that I'm going to be sharing with you guys in a moment. And also, if you're late, um, if you were late and you want to be in the draw for this, then please just say um, me in the chat so that you can go in the draw to win this. We'll be drawing it at the end of the session today. We've got this fabulous platform that we use called Wheel of Names, and we put the names in, spin it, and whoever wins will put the screenshot up, and, and they will get a free one-on-one -on -one social media audit strategy session with me. We'll be doing it live together so that I talk all the way through all of your socials, etc. With 799 and you'll get a recorded session, you'll get a report, actionable items and strategy tips for you to move forward with. So make sure you've said me in the chat so that you're included in this 
we'll be drawing it in about ooh, 40 minutes. So did you know that 86% of business use video marketing and YouTube is the world's second most visited website? Number one is Google. So a lot of people think of YouTube as just a social media platform, but actually that's what it began as. But really, it is a search engine. People jump onto YouTube to search for something. So if you're not using YouTube, have a little think about um, where you could be using it, how you could be using it. And I noticed something, um, I think it was Christina Yogini said before that she, when she's researching or watching health videos or something like that. So it's a great place to go for research and to watch, you know, how, how to do something. Like, honestly, even it was just something to do with my oven seal, I thought, do I need to get the guy out here, which I knew would literally take two weeks to get him here, or could I just Google it and find out? So I watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to change it, and then I went, yeah, I'm bringing the guy out. So, but I'm sure many, many, many people literally learn out, learn how to do really great things around the house or whatever just from, from that. So if you haven't got a video up there about, especially if you're a product-based business, saying, um, you know, reasons why you need this, then or features and advantages and benefits of this, it would be a really, really good idea to do that. Um, and of course, YouTube could be part of your marketing strategy. And it's a really cost effective way to promote your um, stuff. So 90% of consumers claim that a video will help them when they're making a purchase decision. And 2 billion people interact with reels every single month, which is mind blowing. And the highest Instagram and reels engagement rates are got by Instagram accounts with fewer than 5,000 followers reaching up to 3.9% on average. So I really hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration as well to keep going. If you have a small following, it's actually a good thing you're going to reach more people with your videos and it will help you grow as well. So we want to keep making sure though that those first three seconds of our video are actually going to grab people so that we reach more people. So I've got a little uh, question for you guys. Tell me in the chat, how many times a day do you think that people touch their phones? So that means your smartphone, whether you're touching, tapping, swiping, et cetera. What do you think it is, the number of times that we do this every single day? Ha-ha, <laughs> Vanamala. First guess, 2.30. Come on, Yvonne, give me a figure. What do you think is a figure? But yes, all day long, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but how many times? 500 for Julia, 300 for Kristen. Kate's going as far as 1,000. Wahoo! So what else have we got, guys? Any good guesses there? Over 2,000 for Janine, 350 for Christina. Yeah, 1,000, easy. Well, the official number is 2,617 times a day. So. What that mean? I know, yikes, Julia. So, and that's for an average user. The people that are heavy users is apparently more than double that, if not triple. So what we want to think about is how can we get people touching their phones? So easy peasy, uh, Yvonne says three times a day. <laughs> so what you want to think about is what can you do that makes them engage? So if you share your reel into your stories, Make sure then that you add a sticker on it and it might be the swipe sticker or a poll or whatever it is because we're already accustomed to touching our phones. So encourage people to do that. So I just added these stats over the weekend and I think my team will be surprised at this one. So on average, people spend three hours and 15 minutes on their phones per day. Individuals check their phones on average of 58 times a day, which definitely is not me. I'm not that many for sure. Um, I found some really interesting stats too, though, that told me that we use it heaps more during the week, particularly during working hours across the world than we do on weekends, which is fascinating, isn't it? Um, but it says Filipinos spend the highest amount of average time on their phones each day. So averaging five hours, 47 minutes, which just blew my mind. 
Japanese people spend under half of the global average time on their smartphones. So they're only one hour, 39 minutes. And Australians are somewhere kind of in the middle to later part, which, uh, so this is out of 50 different countries. Australia was at number 37 at two hours and 49 minutes. So tell me in the chat, does that surprise you? Or is that more than you would think? Do you feel like you're maybe two hours, 49 minutes or more or less than that? Um, or oh, I'm keen to know from my team what they think about the five hours, 47 minutes. That's just extraordinary. <laughs> and people think I must be on mine all the time and on social media all the time. I've actually had someone tell my husband how appalling it was that I didn't respond quickly to him and his messages to me because obviously I'm, fa I'm on Facebook all day and all night. And he laughed to, to this guy and he said, Actually, she's not. She schedules her content. So, no, she's not on there all the time. Um, and, of course, I'm working. So my working involves being on Zoom the majority of the time. So I'm certainly not on my phone there unless I'm showing someone how to use it. So, uh, yeah, I don't think for me that I would be two hours, 49 minutes on an average day. Uh, Kate my, says, my daughter spends all her waking hours on the phone. I feel that way about my husband sometimes too. Um, I'm less than the average. I even forget my phone when I go out sometimes. What a relief. The relief. I'm old school. Good on you, Christina. Um, I purposely, when I bought my Apple Watch a few years ago, I purposely built the, bought the one that could be used independently of my phone so that when I go to the gym or I go for a walk or something, I don't need to have my phone with me. And if there's a little emergency, it'll come up on my phone, uh, on my watch. But aside from that, I really like time away from my phone. Uh, Yvonne says, my hubby leaves his in the car whilst at work. So only 10 to 15 minutes a day. Amazing. So let's talk about using video to showcase your brand. So there's a few things we want to think about. Number one is be authentic. So people do business with people. You need to be authentic. And if you don't share who you are with your audience, they're less likely to choose you to do business with. And if not you, then it's your competition. So you should definitely go and take a little look at your competition and see what kind of videos that they're making. That does not mean I'm suggesting you go and copy them. Just look at what they're doing and think, do I like what they're putting out there? What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? what sort of opportunities are there for me that they're not um, jumping in on? Or maybe this, the videos that they're putting out really don't leave a good impression on you. And you think, well, that's a great opportunity for me to make something really completely different. So that next point is leave a lasting impression. So videos should leave people thinking about what it is that you do, what impact you can have on them. Um, also, there's motivate people. So your video should motivate them to buy whatever it is that you're offering, whether it be a product or a service, et cetera. So they should definitely provide emotional value. So most of the videos that you'll have seen that you enjoy watching make you feel something, whether that's excited about a new product or sad or about something or happy or all of those. So let me know when you watch the um, Squatty Potty ad, that video, what did that make you feel? Did it make you feel that you need to go out and buy a squatty potty because I'm telling you when you read the chat comments on that video, it is extraordinary how many people said that they went out and bought one because it was just so good. Um, so emotional value absolutely needs to be included in your video and, of course, a really clear call to action. So that's one of the big things that we'll be covering as we carry on today. Um, me too, Yvonne, two of them, one for each of our bathrooms. <laughs> but that was before I even saw that ad, and I do really think that they are brilliant. <laughs> so I'm asked this question a fair bit. Do I need, or not in this exact way, people will just say, oh, if I'm going to start doing video, I'm going to have to get a much, much better camera, et cetera, et cetera. But no, you absolutely don't need to. You just need to make sure um, that you are using what you have in your hand. So when the question is, do I need to have the most expensive camera and microphone to record a video? The answer is absolutely no. All you need is 
your phone. So it's the one that you're already using is the best thing for you right now. Recording a video doesn't need to be complicated and hard. You can either have a selfie stick or place your phone against the wall or in front of your window is fine. You just need some natural light. So if you're going to be recording um, you, you need to be thinking a few, about a few things. So these are some five must-dos before you start recording. So you need to think about your audio, make sure that your listeners can hear your voice properly. So I use these little um, microphones. I'm just trying to think of the name. Ooh, one of my team might be able to tell me, or maybe one of Jenny's teams that I know, I know you guys are in here today might say, because Jenny and I have got the same. No, it's not. This is the one that I use for this right now, which is my big giant arm microphone. Um, but no, we have these little ones for when we're away and we're using our phones, etc. And Or you can use them with your laptop. Um, and they're really great little ones that just, this little lapel mic anyway, but they're super awesome. Um, and so you want to make sure, maybe you don't even need an external mic, but I know for me, it's really, really important that my sound is crisp and clear. So you want to think about your background. So make sure that your background's clean and fresh to the eyes. So you can even, I use a app on my phone if I'm recording called, um, teleprompter and I love it because it can blur my background a little bit. And it also, whatever little script I've written, then it can go up as the captions. So instead of Facebook or Instagram to um, do the captioning, and often they get it wrong, it's actually the captions exactly the way I want them written because I've already put it in there. So that's just a free little app. But I use um, the paid version of it, which just allows me to record for a little bit longer. So definitely got to be thinking about your background. Um, clean your lens. I can't believe how many people don't do that. So before you press record, definitely clean your lens. Make sure that you're well lighted. If you don't have a ring light, then it's fine. You can record your video in front of your window so that you have a nice natural light. And probably the most important one here is turn your phone notifications off. Um, for me, with my phone, I can just swipe down from the top right, which um, then gives me the option. So mine's on focus, but I can change that over to um, do not disturb. So I will always make sure I do that before I start recording. Um, I've had many different mics in the past, Yvonne, to answer your question. I've got over there the Yeti Blue. Um, that's just sitting on my shelf, but this is definitely my favourite one now, which is the Rode, um, oh, what's it called? The Rode Podcaster. Um, but then the little one that I have, I'm just trying to think where it is. Oh, it might just be in this. In fact, it is in this bag right here. And it is called, oh, Charmaine, you were right. My little wee plug-in one is also the Rode brand. And it's a great little one. It's so tiny. You can see it here. This little weeny, weeny, weeny thing. And it just clips on here and you can even tuck it inside your clothes or whatever. So it's a really, really good option. It even has a little fluffy things on it to help with the wind if you're recording outside, etc. So I really do enjoy those. Um, now I want to quickly, oh, I'm just, just a reminder too, but I know you've probably all entered it by now. But if you haven't, Pop me in the chat if you want to be in to win one of these. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this before we get stuck into creating our videos. So I was asked recently, I, it was somebody that said to me, I'm not sure I completely understand what it is that you guys have got going on. So I just created this graphic. So this side of the business over here is our coaching programs. And we've got three different levels that suit each stage of your business. This one over here is our masterclasses. Now, the people in our gold and silver programs get all of the masterclasses as part of their um, programs, but you can buy a masterclass. We do have them that you can buy them as a single, or you can buy um, where you buy two and you get one free. And these are a great way if you find a topic that you really want to get stuck into, because they're a full day masterclass. They're either 10 to 3 or 10 to 4. We do have a couple that are half day masterclasses but they're small groups. So we only ever allow three people to buy one that are not part of our program. So there's never more than three for sale. Um, and then this one here is our brand new offering. So this is our membership. Um, and in fact, we're going live tomorrow. So there's two live sessions per month 
Tomorrow is the Ask Me Anything session. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's at 8 a.m. Um, New South Wales time. And I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. And then the other part of our business is our done for you offerings. So there's three different um, packages there for our social media stuff. But this new one here, the Shine Online Hub. So it's the first Tuesday of, of the month is the Learn Online. So that's Zoom Live. Anyone can come in and ask questions literally about anything. And this came about because I don't think that there's a day, including weekends, where people don't ask me something, whether it's a friend or someone I worked with 20 years ago or whatever, and they'll say, how do you do this? Or what do you think about that? Or I can't do that, et cetera, et cetera. So I've set up this um, membership so that you can come in and just ask me the questions. You can share your screen. I can share my screen. It's just a wonderful way to talk about anything to do with not just digital marketing, but business in general. And so that one happens on the first Tuesday of the month at 8 a.m., on the second Tuesday of the month, we do an instructional video. So it will be sitting in your Facebook group and you can watch it um, whenever you're ready and keep it, of course, for later on. So it can be just a few minutes long showing you how to do something that's new on Canva or showing you how to set up a YouTube or showing you anything you want. Uh, Christina says, if I join Shine Online, um, no, no, no. So every single week there's new stuff in there. So you get access to all of it. Uh, so it's a monthly membership. It's $89 a month plus GST, and you can quit any time. You don't need to come in for a certain amount of time. You can um, just try it out for a month even if you want to. So then number three is the third Tuesday of the month. That's another live session, and that's called a um, – oh, did I say this one here is the Learn Online, and then the last one is the Ask Me Anything. Um, and then the fourth one is the uh, fourth Tuesday of the month is a challenge. So we give you some kind of resource or a checklist, and then we give you a challenge so that you can take part. So it might be to overhaul your Instagram bio. This is how you're going to do it. Now head off and do it. Or it might be to do a video or all kinds of things. So it really helps you get accountable and actually take action. Thanks, Kate, for your lovely feedback. She says, I love it. And I've learned so much. So that's super awesome. Thank you. Um, so it says here the third one is definitely the Ask Many thing. And the first one is the Learn Online. So tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., it's the Ask Me Anything. So I'm really looking forward to that, guys. Um, and I kept thinking that tomorrow was the first, but, of course, tomorrow is the third Tuesday of the month. Um, so, yeah, we run it through a Facebook group, but we're, we're on Zoom together. All your content sitting in the Facebook group, and also we have a messenger group. So um, really fun for anyone that wants to get involved. It's a very, very low cost way to um, have access to um, new trainings, new resources, etc. So yeah, we'll share the link in the chat if you want to find out more about that. But let's move on to planning your video. Oh, and if you've got any questions about Shine or any of our other um, program offerings, just make sure you just send us a message in chat or send me a private message or send me an email or anything you like. Okay, so let's talk about reasons for using your smartphone to access social media and why people do it. And I really want you to think while we're going through this is how can what you, what kind of content you might put out there, what does this mean for you when you learn these stats? So 51.8% of people said that they're on social media because they're bored. So hence, we want to edutain them. So educate and entertain them, not just sell at them. Notice that nobody said that they came on here to buy or to shop. They said boredom was the biggest one. Curiosity was the second one. Information's next. Loneliness is next. And necessity and work after that. Oh, sorry, I couldn't even fit in the words for this one. But that's health purposes, 0.4%. So screen time is on the rise, of course, whether that's positive or negative is debatable, but globally it is an undeniable fact that it is on the increase when, of course, we're going to reach a plateau at some point, but there's nothing to indicate that that's going to be happening anytime soon. So think about your content, particularly even the content that you're putting out right now on your socials. Where does it fit in with your ideal audience? What might they be on social media for? And how are you sharing content? So is it informational? Is it piquing people's curiosity? Is it helping them with their boredom? So clearly that's why the 
TikTok style of dancing videos go so well, right? Because the people can just scroll them endlessly because there's always somebody's new dancing to watch. Um, so before you start, these things are really important to think about. So I did mention that we're going to be talking about AI today, and we most certainly are. But I want you to know straight off the bat, you can't rely solely on AI. So you actually can even make entire videos using nothing but AI, using AI voice, using, using AI video, using AI vi um, graphics, AI captions and everything. But at the end of the day, people would be do business with real people. And you've got to think about that no like and trust factor. So it's always vital to keep this in mind if you want to take people with you on your customer journey. So our next masterclass is this Wednesday and it's just a half day. I think it's one till four. And that is the whole customer journey funnel. So if you want in that, um, be part of it, there's only those three spots. So actually, I think there's only two left now. So if you want to be part of that, we'll give you a little link um, in the chat so that you can jump on that. Um, but yeah, thinking about your customer journey funnel and thinking about how you create videos is so incredibly important, understanding your customer journey. Uh, because one thing you need to always think about is that it costs so much in terms of time, money, energy, and everything to get a new customer, but keeping that customer and taking them on a journey with you so that they then refer you, et cetera, et cetera, is absolutely vital for longevity in your business. So then we want to think about who is the video for? So if you've done some work around creating your customer avatars or your um, client personas, there's all kinds of different ways of referring to that. I'd like to call them customer avatars. But we absolutely need to think about who are we making this video for? And that will A, tell us what size we want to create it. It'll tell us what length we want to create it and what kind of content we're going to put into it. We also want to think about being the solution to someone's problem. So is what we offer offer actually going to So AI can definitely help you generate ideas. It can help you create content really, really quickly and definitely efficiently. Um, it's 89 per month for the Shine Online Hub Yvonne. I'm not sure where it says 97, but that's my little mistake if it is because it's definitely 89. But thank you for pointing that out. Um, one thing to think about with AI that's a problem is that it often lacks the human touch, that it definitely lacks emotion much of the time, and it can lack creativity. And there's also the risk. Oh, weird. Yes, 89 plus GST. So I'm not sure where that one is, Yvonne, but I appreciate that. And I'll get my team looking into that right now. But hopefully on the link for the Stripe link, for example, we sign up, hopefully that one's got 89 plus GST. Yes. Thank you. I'm very glad that you've pointed out that. I appreciate that. Um, so also there's the risk with AI that there's going to be bias and there's going to be errors. So a lot of AI content is, let's be honest, rubbish. You're probably already seeing a fair bit of that getting out around the, around the traps now. Um, and so rubbish is probably putting it kind of nicely, actually. So it takes a good editor to pick and choose what's right for your brand. So understanding the pros and cons of the technology will help you offset the risks. Risks. So if you're going to use AI for content creation, you want to start by asking whether it can create content worthy of your brand. So then we talked about who's the video for. It's not for you. It's for your ideal client. And you want to think of one thing, which is let's actually all grab our phones right now. This is a little thing because when we're thinking about what we're doing for other people, excuse me a moment while I just let the dog out of the office. Off you go. She's been in here for hours. Um, so... Hold up your phone and hold the camera. Now, you're not going to use these photos anywhere unless you think it's a fabulous selfie. But I want you to just open up the camera app, turn it so it looks at you, and take a photo just straight on. Boom. Click. Okay. Now, take a little look at that photo and see what you think about it. Mine's absolutely <laughs> terrible. I've got like a little startled rabbit look on my face. Um, the next one I want you to do this time, though, is do it a little differently. Because what you may not be aware of, or you probably are, but you may not be, is that when you look at the camera, 
you're actually, when you look at your screen, you're not actually looking at the camera. So on an iPhone, I'm not sure about on an Android, but on an iPhone, you'll notice when you've got the camera pointing towards you, that there's a little green dot at the very top in the middle. That's actually the camera. So this time I want you to take another selfie, but in this time I want you to angle your phone slightly. I want you to, so at the top of it's angling towards you, so it's on a little bit of an angle. I want you to hold it up so it's actually more in line with your forehead rather than down there looking, you're looking directly at it. So hold it up, angle it slightly towards you, and this time instead of looking at yourself, look at the little green dot above. That's where you look at the camera and take the selfie. Now go back and look at both of those pictures and see what a difference it makes just with that slightly different angle, that slightly different um, height of where you're holding it up, and also the fact that you're actually looking at the camera as opposed to looking at yourself. Um, you'll be, yeah, Karen, it's incredible, isn't it? Just a tiny, tiny little edit like that makes a big difference. Um, so definitely have a little play around with that one. Okay, so be, thinking about, I asked you guys before you came in. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yes, I agree, Janine. It's definitely, definitely better of that higher camera angle. Um, so I asked you guys before you came in today to think of three problems or issues or concerns or obstacles that your dream clients and customers have that your service or product solves. And then I wondered you to think about what do you or your what do you do or what's your service offering or what are your products that solves these problems or issues or concerns? And then what kind of action do you want people to take? Um, so your client or dream customers. So do you want them to buy your product or book time with you, et cetera? So I wrote it in this way, and hopefully you all got the email asking you to do this. And then this morning we sent out another one saying also to download Cap Cut. Um, so hopefully you've all thought about this. And if you have, let me know in the chat. You might even want to share what those three problems are or obstacles or issues or concerns that these people have. Um, what do you do to solve them and what action you want those people to take? Um, do you want them to sign up to your webinar or do you want them to book time with you or do you want them to buy a product or sign up to your subscription or membership or what is it that you actually want them to do? So once you've been thinking about this, which is so important before you do any video at all, then we can take a little look at my five point video success strategy. So if you have a computer or a um, that you can use while you're also in this workshop, that's great. You can open up chat GPT and or maybe you just want to use the chat GPT app on your phone. So I just want to talk you through this but first and then I'm going to share the prompt that I've written um, that you can then put into chat GPT. So the first five, the five things that I want you to think about to get really great videos is number one, you. We already talked about that. So you want to capture their focus with you-centric words within those first three seconds. You want to think about their issues. So addressing three specific issues or problems that your target customer or client is seeking solutions for. Um, three, the reason that we do three is because it's a well-researched um, thing psychologically three is short three is enough three is just bite size and uh, we can hold between five and seven things in our minds at once but when you allow for um distractions like about anything which of course is happening all the time then there's really only room in your listeners or um, audiences head for three things so you really just want to stick with three max so three is also a pattern, um, whereas once is just a random event, twice is coincidence, but three times is proof. So it's a little bit of magic there. Um, so we want to do three specific issues or problems. Offer, what solutions does your business offer to tackle the issues or problems? And action, specify the action your ideal customers and clients should take by providing a clear call to action. So what is that? It could be... Um, you know, click the link in the bio to buy, or it could be um, give me a thumbs up emoji if you love this, or you know, share this with your with a friend that you know needs this, or whatever it is. 
Um, so then the final one is outcome. What's the expected outcome? And have you addressed the questions, which would be what's in it for me or how will this, how will this benefit me? So people are going to take action when they know that you can solve a problem, either to move away from pain or move towards pleasure. And then, of course, we want to make that call to action easy. Um, how can we make it easier than what we are right now for our followers or our buyers to do something? And you, do you need what do you need? And are you doing always be thinking about the use? So I created one here, um, a prompt which is putting all that stuff in here. And I'm going to do a copy and paste into the chat for you so that you can use it. Because this morning, I'm not sure if my team were able to look at that and fix it. Oh, yay, Shem shared the prompt. So usually in ChatGPT, you can share a link so that you can all have access to this. And for some reason, I couldn't find how to do that. So whether they've taken that away or not, I'm, I don't know what's happened. But very, very frustrating. So I thought, okay, well, you can just copy this and paste it into ChatGPT yourself, changing the bottom sentence. So you'll see here, I wrote to ChatGPT, please create a short form video script using the following structure. You, issue, offer, action, outcome. So literally copy paste this whole thing, except for this. Because what I then wrote was, the business that we use for this video is a clothing company. And one of the problems that the ideal customer faces is that sustainable clothing is too expensive. So I'm going to show you what it came up with. And my chat GPT paste will look a little different um, to yours because I have the paid version of it. Um, but that's why it's got all these extra emojis and things because I've already set up my, uh, what's it called? It's in the beta testing phase though, where we actually can set up how we want ChatGPT to respond to us. So you'll get, you see something slightly different to me if you have um, the 3.5 version instead of the 4. So anyway, have a little look at this. The you, it came with host. Hey, you. Yeah, you, the fashion forward individual who cares about the planet. Ever feel like you're stuck in a style dilemma? And this is then showing you the issue. Let me guess your struggles. One, you want to dress sustainably, but oh boy, those price tags are sky high. Two, you've tried fast fashion, but it falls apart too quickly. And let's not even talk about the environmental impact. And number three, you're overwhelmed by the choices and you just can't find a brand that matches your values and your vibe. The offer is, what if I told you you don't have to compromise anymore? Introducing bloop, 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 the brand name, the place where fashion meets affordability and sustainability. We offer eco-friendly materials that don't break the bank, long-lasting quality, say goodbye to single-season wears, designs that scream you and ethics that scream care. Then the action part was ready to make a change that benefits you and our beautiful planet. Here's what you need to do. Click the link below to browse our latest collection. Use the code ECOSTYLE at checkout for an exclusive 10% discount. Share your new look on social media, tag us, and become a part of our sustainable fashion community. Outcome by choosing brand name, you're not just getting a new wardrobe, you're investing in quality, supporting ethical labor practices and contributing to a cleaner earth. So what's in it for you? Style you can feel good about in every sense of the word. Now you'll notice there's no editing done and I would never post any of this without editing because it sounds to me very much like AI. So I would fix all that up. But the key is just by using this prompt that I've written, using my five-point video success strategy, it's really given me a good framework or a good outline if I need a little help along the way. I would for sure also um, shorten this so it's much quicker. I would time myself speaking it before I actually put it out there on socials and you know made a little video to go with. But it's so simple to come up with that Um you remembering to say you, the three issues, the offer, the action, and the outcome. One more thing I want to say though with the call to action is aim for one only. And this was a I should have mentioned that maybe in the prompt, but it gave too many, um, too many call to actions. Like we can't ask people to do three things. So just one thing at a time, because if you're watching a reel, you're hardly gonna go, oh, I better remember to do that. And oh, now I've got to also do that. And now I've also got to do that. So literally make it easy for people. So I hope that you enjoy that um, little prompt and see how you go. I can't wait to start seeing your videos out there in a really great script. 
So a good brand story will help people understand who you are, what you do, and how to engage with you. So we're going to take a little look at my five-step formula, which is different to my five-point video success strategy. So this one is the five-step formula to awesome brand videos. So number one, we want to really think about how we're going to launch into the problem. So your viewers, of course, need to know that you are the solution to their problem, that what they're going to see in the video is going to tell them what, that you are or what you've got or what your product is or what your offering is, is the solution. So I want to talk about Julie. I don't believe that she's here today, but I've been working with Julie for a number of years and she's the owner and inventor of Helmet Brims. Um, and they are the best sun protection for horse riders everywhere. So your problem might be, or your question might be, are you struggling to do what you love all day? Because keeping safe from the harsh sun is impossible on horseback. Keep in mind that I've just said, are you struggling to do what you love all day? So twice I've mentioned it in the first three seconds, the you. Then do you have trouble doing this? Then the solution is that, or your product or service is the solution. So you're looking to find their pain points, their issues, find their problems. What is it that they need help with? And then launch right into that on the opening, which is better than, I, I would not do a video like this, but this is an example of how not to do it. Hi, I'm Kylie Mowbray Allen, and I'd like to tell you about everything that I do, what my offerings are, and what I studied at university, and the jobs I've had since then, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely, we don't want to introduce ourselves first. We want to launch into talking directly to you, not talking about me. So I want to launch into the problem instead. I can still introduce myself, but I'll wait after, till after that for that little bit. So your offering needs to solve their problem. So at this stage, uh, we're definitely not mentioning your qualifications or your experience or anything like that. That can go on your website if it's relevant because your video is about your viewers. That's what they're watching. So number three is keep it simple. Three to five key points to describe your offering. So um, that could be when you're sharing what they need to know in order to trust you, like you, buy from you, book your service, etc. It's about them. So what do they need to know in order to trust and like you? And as I said here, keep it simple. You want to be sharing some testimonials, perhaps. You could do whole reels that are nothing but testimonials. So they're proof that other people have paid for your product or for your service and other people have liked what you offer. People believe what other people say about you more than they believe what you say about yourself. And people share when they've had good results. So whether that's written testimonials or whether you're reading them out loud or whether they've done video testimonials for you, which is even better, but whatever you can manage is really great. So you could also share results that customers have had from your products from by using storytelling or pictures or results that clients have had by working with you. So um, the last one is the call to action. So we absolutely want to be thinking about that. I've got one here um, that I did for Helmet Brims as an example again. So we need to be told what to do next because we're not mind readers. So do you want us just to go and click a link and go buy the product or perhaps we've just seen or heard how awesome that Helmet Brim is, so how are we going to get one for ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. Perhaps you're going to offer a discount code for a short while. That'll give us FOMO because we want to buy it now. Perhaps you want us to book a Zoom call or a phone call. So if that's the case, you could use something like Calendly that we use or Acuity to schedule something. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can do a call to action, but make sure that it suits your customers. So we have a little um, free e-guide for anyone that wants it, which is six steps to get more testimonials and reviews so that you can do number four even better than what you're doing it now. Okay, so let's get into our project. And I realized that I've, I'm going to be going over time. So I hope that you guys have, um, have an extra maybe 10 minutes in your day that you can stay on for it. I'm terribly sorry if you have to go and that I've gone over. But I'm going to really zip through this and hopefully you'll find it pretty fast. Um, to do. So the first thing I said to you guys, or one of the first things I said at the beginning was to take five pictures or find five pictures in your camera roll already. So the ideas could be take some photos of your view, your office, your desk, yourself. Um, so you want to pull out your phone, get those five pics. And then I want you guys to, I'm just going to pull up my phone. And of course, I'm going to click it over to do not disturb, or it was already on do not disturb, but that's important. You're now going to scan this QR code, but first of all, you need to make sure that you've already got the cap cap 
CapCut app installed on your phone. So if you have already got it, then open up your camera and scan this now. And I'll just pull it back because that was doing a funny thing. Um, so this is a little challenge that we're going to do all together. So when you've scanned it, it then says um, use template in CapCut. So I'm going to click on that one. And then it says open this page in CapCut. So I'm going to click on open. And boom, here I am at this template now, which is a cute little one. It just needs five photos. So I'm going to stop my share and do a new share so that you can see my, um, my phone. Excuse so, me, Christy. Yes. Sorry, yes. I'm on. I'm on my phone on the Zoom. How do I scan it on the Zoom? I take a photo. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, because you're on your phone. We'll we'll put the link in the chat for you, Kate. Okay. Thanks so much, Kylie. No worries. Okay, so I'll stop the share. There is actually a way that you can do it. Um, but ah, oh, two cap cuts. I didn't know that. Um, I'll show you the what it looks like. Hang on a second. Um, I had pulled it up before. Um, can one of my team put in the CapCut link? Um, and that would be awesome. Thank you. And then the other thing is, Maybe even put up the link to hang on a sec. Yes, it is definitely black and white. I'll just show you what that looks like. My present thing is having some issues oh, into full screen mode. Let me go back to Zoom and share my screen again to audience window. Okay, so it's in here. There's just a little weeny one. Can you see up there where the yellow one is that says intro and outro previously created using CapCut? That is the little icon for CapCut. And then I think there's also one towards the end. Did I put that up? Oh, here <laughs> on that page. See that CapCut logo there? So make sure that you've found that one. Now, CapCut is owned by TikTok, and I am very passionately anti and against TikTok. I would never, ever use TikTok. I wouldn't download it. I don't want anything to do with it. <clears throat> However... I'm very happy to use this app, and so I'm just not going to use it in relation to TikTok, though. I'm going to use it for Instagram and Facebook, et cetera. So um, see if you can scan. Once you've got the app, then scan that so that you can actually access. Um, oh, me too, says Janine. Yeah, there's more and more people freaking out about it and getting rid of it. No, 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 you don't have to pay for CapCut. You're just going to use the free version of it. Um, oh, thanks. Merlin shared the Google Play one, the App Store one, and then also the website if you want to go through there. Hailey? Yeah. How do you scan a Q code? I've never done one. You hold up your phone? Yep. With the camera app open? Yep. And you just hover it over that QR code. Okay. <coughs> and then what does it do? When you're hovering it, is it, it is something coming up in the middle uh, around the QR code? No. No, but now it's in my... F no. Uh, what's meant to be around it? Uh, just a little, just yellow in the corners, on mine anyway. Oh, I see. Something yellow just came up, HDR. There you go. Click on that. Okay. Great. So I'm yep. now going, if you can, I've never paid for it. So if you don't, well, I did have a paid version for a little while, but that was only recently, but I've never had the paid version as a, 
when I first got it. So hopefully, guys, that's not a terrible new thing that they've just started. What did they charge you for it, um, Yvonne? Oh, it doesn't say. You can, after we're finished here, you can go on there and um, do a little complain through your app store and say, I didn't want it to do that. So let's see if you guys can see my phone so that we can create this together. So I went and I scanned that. Oh, hang on. So there you go, um, Francine. Can you see what happens when I hold my phone up? I can see that, but it's different, yeah. Right, but it, because we'll be on different phones and stuff. Oh, but, okay. And then, then you would click on that link that where it says qrco.de, which opens up this. You then click on use the template in CapCut. I remember I said you already needed to have CapCut. And then it says open this page in CapCut. So I'm going to go, okay. Now, I'm pressing pause on that because I want to use this template. So down the bottom on the right, I'm going to click on Use Template. And I'm going to go into my photos, and I'm going to find five photos that I want to use with it. So I'm going to do one from a little beach walk um, the other night. So I'm going to go, so the first one is 2.3 seconds, then 4 seconds, 3, 3, 2.7. So if you actually have... Um, Video clips, you can use them for sure. But let me just put some photos in here just for this instance. So I'm going to go boom, 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 and boom. I just realized that I think I want to get rid of that one and switch that one over. So it's... Damn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's that one there that I want to use, the most recent. Okay, then I'm going to click on Preview. <laughs> okay, because of time, I'm not going to do any more switching out of photos or anything like that. I'm just going to put it out there right now. But... See how at the bottom it says summer? So I want to edit that. So I'm going to click on the word summer. Oh, sorry. I'm going to click on text at the very bottom first. And then that gives me the option to edit summer. So I'll click on summer and I'm going to change that to um, beach evenings. And then click on tick. So you need to know when we're using a template on CapCut, we actually can't change the font, we can't change much about it at all. However, in this particular one, we can change the words, which I really like. So I'm going to click on tick. You'll notice it says cap cut up on the top right, but um, I'm going to show you a way to get rid of that in a moment. So all we've got now is five images turned into a little video, and we're going to click on export. So boom. So it's going to say save to device with cap cut watermark. Or it'll say, save and share to TikTok without cut, 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 cut watermark. So I want you to click on save and share to TikTok because it doesn't actually, I don't even have the TikTok app. So as you can see, all it's doing is saving it. Um, and it's saving it without the watermark, which I'm thrilled about. Then it gives me the option to share, which I'm not going to do. So at this point, it's already put it on my camera roll. So I'm actually not going to do anything else with it at all. I don't need to go and save it in any other way. And I'm definitely not going to click on Instagram or WhatsApp or Facebook or anything else like that. I want to make sure that I'm going to post it natively myself. So now we're finished with that. Um, I want to go now and open up Instagram. So uh, here we go. Open it up. I'll make sure I'm on my account. Yes, I am. Perfect. So up on the top on the right, I can click the little plus and I'm going to click on real and I'm going to pull up the one that I just made. I'm going to press pause on it because I just wanted you to see there. Um, maybe I don't want to use that audio so I can click on next. I can go to edit video and I can change 
change the audio if I want to and add some trending audio to it from directly from Instagram or whatever. But for this instance, I'm not going to. I'm just going to post it exactly as it is. So I'm going to click on next. Most important that at this point I click on edit cover because otherwise it'll look like this. Um, see, when I click on edit cover, it'll just be that one there. So instead I could add a photo from the camera roll or I can click, move this along and choose one of those from within it. So I'm actually going to choose that little sunset there. Then I'm going to click on profile grid, which is beside cover. And I can go up and down or I can zoom out or zoom in to make sure that it's going to look really nice. And this is often where I have pre-created something in Canva. Maybe Canva on my phone or maybe Canva on my desktop and downloaded it to my phone. So I've got a really good cover image that's going to work well on my Instagram account. So I'm going to click on done in this instance. So I'm just doing a quick run. I'm going to write a little caption. Um, which might say something about, you know, what do you do to relax after hours? What's your go-to? Um, do you go and do an exercise class? Do you walk on the beach? Do you, you know, walk in the park? What do you do? Tell me in the comments below. So I'm always going to make sure that I st that I always do that call to action and ask them if I haven't done it in my little video. And in this instance, the video is just uh, photos, nothing else. So I'm going to do that call to action in my caption. Once I've finished with that, I'll press OK. Of course, I'm going to add a few hashtags as well. Then I'm going to choose, do I also want to tag people in it? If I want to get someone as a collaborator, I could do that in there under the tag people situation. Um, I could add the location. Um, put it onto Facebook as well if I want to, and then I'm going to click on share. So all of that happened in under 10 minutes. Now with CapCut, let me just pull that up. If you um, don't want to use that, well, hopefully you're not going to use that cap that template again because that was just a one-off just to, to give you a go and try it out. But I want you to see just this cool thing. If you go down to the bottom on the left, there's edit, but the next one along is template. So when I wanted to find one for you guys to use, I just typed in five photos template, clicked on it, and it showed me all these different templates that I could use that include five photos in them. Or maybe you've got 20 photos or 30 photos, or maybe like this one here I also made the other day, which was 12 clips, photo and video templates. So that means that I had some video and some photos. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can use CapCut but that's a really cool one that's quite new, this feature with templates in it so that it, you don't have to create them from scratch. And that's pretty fun. So I'm going to stop the share on this and that's so weird, Yvonne, but definitely you can get in touch with them. And I've done it before with iTunes and they've just refunded it immediately. So you can do that for sure because it is a free app. So I'll share my screen just to do our last couple of things. And then if you guys want to stay on and just um, ask for some support with the with that reel, then I can help you with that then. So I'll just go back to my window sharing. Hopefully you guys can see that QR code. The last little bit I want to share with you is that if you want to make some videos on some platforms, um, some of the ones that we use, there are heaps and heaps and heaps out there. And I'm just sharing um, the five that we use the most. So the first one is CapCut, and this here is the version of it for your desktop. So again, you don't need to be um, paying for it. You can, it'll always ask you, do you want to have the paid version? But you can definitely get away with doing the free one. All the things that I've showed you over the last couple of hours, anytime there's been a CapCut one, it's always been created with the free version. So it's a really simple video editing tool. It's free, super easy to use, and they're constantly adding updates to it of things that you can do, like, for example, those templates. The next one that I use quite a bit is in video. Um, I probably use it less and less because I've been using Canva more and more as they keep updating what they offer in Canva. But we have a code here for you, um, which is gives you 25% off. And it's an affiliate code, so we'll put that in the chat for you. Um, it's amazing. I have to say this one and the next one I'm about to show you, they both are amazing. They both have the really cool feature if you want to make blog videos. So some of my team make blog videos for some of our clients. So I haven't been doing them a lot of late, but my team are doing them, and they would use either InVideo or Wave. 
And I really love it when literally all you're going to do is paste in your link from your blog into here and it will create the whole thing for you. It's pretty incredibly awesome. Uh, this one here is same. So I used Wave long before I used InVideo. I only found out about InVideo in 2020, but I'd been using Wave for at least three years before that. Um, and in both in video and wave, you can resize them for the, you know, whether you want it for YouTube or for reels or whatever. So an example of the wave one, um, is the one that I did for Nick, the one about the positive affirmations or things to say to your kids that are positive. This one here is just showing you Canva. So I've never used the free version, only ever the pro version because just the videos alone in it, uh, they're all part of the pro version. So it was not very good a year or two ago for video, but they're just improving and improving all the time. So definitely I use it more often um, than not now for that. And also I was going to say I was giving you five, but I've actually given you four platforms that you could try out. So I'm not sure how much it is per month. You pay just monthly. I pay for Canva yearly. So it ends up being around $13 Australian per month, but I pay for the whole year. It's by far the cheapest way to get it. Um, I believe you can also still get a $30, uh, sorry, a 30 day free trial or maybe a 14 day free trial. But anyway, well worth having a little look at. So um, remember that before you can be good at something, you must dare to suck first. So if you feel like you really sucked with that reel, um, you just got to keep practicing, keep practicing and keep practicing. And you can do it so easily with literally just some photos and um, putting them together and it turns into a reel. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do that. But, um, yeah, I really encourage you to try that out. Um, I mentioned to you earlier before, but I'll just mention it again. If you want to jump on that Shine Online hub, it's be awesome to have you. Tomorrow is the third Tuesday of the month. And that's the Ask Me Anything session. So we jump on live at 8 a.m. and you can just ask all your questions. It might be about your website, your socials, how to do anything at all. So jump on in. And if you want to be part of that, we'll put the link again in the chat for you. And it's 89 a month. But, yes, someone said something about 97. That's because 89 plus GST makes it 97.90 per month, so less than 100 bucks. So just under $25 a week for lots and lots of good, awesome stuff. So two lots of lives a month and two lots of resources per month and a challenge. So let's look at a little summary. So video is a powerful form of content that can convey a lot of information in a short amount of time. Videos are becoming increasingly popular on social media platforms and social media algorithms tend to prioritize video content, making it more likely to reach a wider audience. And it's all P2P, which is person to person. You might think that you're B2C or B2B, but everyone is P2P. So make videos that your ideal customers can resonate with and relate to. Now, I would love it while we're spinning the wheels to so make sure that you had said yes or me in the chat if you wanted to be part of that um, offer of the social media audit that I'll do with you live on Zoom. So um, we'll be loading, uh, my team have loaded all the names up. We'll be spinning that wheel in a second. So while they're spinning that wheel, let me know what your aha moment was from today. So was it the um, ease of just knowing what words to put in the first three seconds. And it's just got to be a U word. Or was it the words not to put inside your video? Or was it what platforms you can use? Or was it that you could literally put a reel together with just using a few photos? So let me know in the chat what it was for you that you found um, um that was your aha moment from today. Sorry, I just realized there was heaps in the chat. Um, that was asking about Canva. Me, 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 says Yvonne. Um, uh, oh, you don't get any money, um, Yvonne, with it. In fact, you literally get nothing. <laughs> I don't get anything from that Canva affiliate. Uh, I think initially it was that you got a free image or something to use. I don't even understand. Um, Kristen says, ability to connect blog posts to reels. Yes. Learned about CapCut. Yes. 
This is how we help you. I love it, Jeff. How easy cap cutters to use. Yay, Karen. Kate says, yes, using you, et cetera, in the first few seconds as I always introduce myself first. Hopefully from today onwards, you won't do that anymore. You'll say how you can help that person and then you can introduce yourself. Um, Sue also says using the you words in the first three seconds rather than talking about yourself first. Julia says cap cut, learning how to connect blog posts to reels. Yay. Um, my aha moment was that I must add you at least twice in the first sentence. Also that I can make a reel from photos, but most of all that before. Um, oh, everyone says why the affiliate? Because the person using it gets a longer free period trial. So it's really just a benefit for them. Uh, blog posts are real great. Um, I read in Facebook policies we cannot use you and ads anymore. Yvonne, I know nothing about that. I haven't heard that. So that's interesting. I'm going to do some deep diving into that because I'm creating ads today and uh, definitely using the words you. Learn to use QR codes, Francine. That's good. I am amazed that you haven't been using QR codes because through the whole pandemic, um, that's how we had to we had to use QR codes to get into all the places. My father-in-law that had never, ever, ever had a mobile phone had to get his first smartphone for that reason. Um, Jane says using you words. Good. Yay, Christine. Just uploaded a video. Woohoo. If you want to share the link to that, Christine, into the chat, then uh, we can all go and do some engaging on it. Um, yay, Janine, forget to use you. Thanks for the reminder. Vanna Muller says, so many aha moments. Incredible, the you word and what not to say at the end of a video. Awesome. Um, I love this too, Charmaine. Before I can be good at something, you must dare to suck first. Um, Yvonne says, ha, I never use a card to go to get anywhere. Well, there you go. Christine says, just switching to a reel as I didn't do that step. <laughs> no worries um cool all right guys well thank you for sharing those my last little quote to share with you before i share the winner is the measure of intelligence is the ability to change that's what albert einstein said so i really really love that one i think that what is that beautiful saying the only constant in life is change so we need to just keep going. So there's here to let go of my perfectionism, just have a go, to not be perfect and to suck first. Yes. And I really love that too. That's super awesome. So let's pull up. My team will have shared with me on Messenger who is our fabulous winner. And we'll share the screenshot with you in just a moment. It's having a little problem loading. I can see Shim sent me a screenshot, but... I can't. I'm going to have to do this. Hang on, guys. Let's do this cool little Canva feature. Uh, let's go. Ooh. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, yeah, here it is. Are we ready? <laughs> Yahoo! The answer is Christine Berry. You have won um that little session with me so i'm really looking forward to connecting with you on that we'll send you a link so that you can book whenever you're ready and yay congrats to you and i'm really pumped about that so thank you all i'm going to stop my share now let's take a photo if you can put your camera on that'd be awesome let's have a little photo so we can say hi oh, it's here doing this hanging out and then i'll stop the recording and i'll answer the questions that anyone might have about um, that reel that they were putting up because I'm very aware I really raced through that super fast. Jeff, it's a pleasure to have you here as our only man in the group, but I understand if you want to stay hidden. <laughs> so let's count down from three and do a little wave. One or three, two, one. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, click stop on the recording now and thank you for being here for our final Flourish Workshop, um, all about video. Mm -hmm.